ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल आई होप यू ऑल आर टेकिंग अ गुड केयर ऑफ योर सेल्फ एंड प्लीज स्टे सेफ एंड टेक केयर ऑफ योर सेल्फ एज वेल एज ऑफ योर पेरेंट्स सो आई थिंक आफ्टर लुकिंग द टाइटल बाय नाउ यू वुड हैव रियलाइज्ड दैट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक मोटर्स एंड व्हाट आर द लॉसेस दैट हैपेंस व्हेन अ मोटर ऑपरेट्स ओके सो दीज आर द टू थिंग्स दैट वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग इन दिस क्लास सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द कॉम्पोनेंट्स components of an electric motor okay now one thing i want to tell you is that see since we are studying through this mode so obviously i won't be able to teach each and everything but whatever i'll i will not be able to cover in this class or in these lectures i will give you in the form of notes so you can go through the notes you can study them and if you have any problem then you can please ask me any time you can message me you can call me you can email me that's what i always say okay and one more suggestion that i have is that you have to clear your basics of class 11th and 12th okay if you think that at this stage i am going to teach you the basics of class 11th and 12th and then i will be taking this class then it's not possible you know first of all we don't have any time and moreover we are not studying in a conventional classroom where i can quickly cover up everything so when i am teaching these topics i expect that you are thorough with your class 11 and 12 basics and if you like if you have forgotten if you don't remember as of now then please go and revise the basics of electric current magnetic field electric field these things you know it will hardly take 1 to 2 hours just study one or two hour just study for one or two hours uh, the basics of electric field and magnetic field electric current magnetic current whatever it is and then you will find it very easy to understand this uh, the working of electric motor or the components of electric motor or how a electric drive works how an electric drive works so these things will be very easy for you okay now let's start this topic so ha huh, the number one uh, so today we will be discussing the uh, components of electric motor so what is an electric motor as i have taught you uh, taught in the last class so electric motor is an electrical machine where the input is electrical energy and your output is mechanical energy okay so this is your how your electric motor works okay this is the definition of electric motor precisely now coming to the components so the first component is rotor now uh, i'll try to embed the image of rotor or stator in this video itself i'll try to embed it otherwise you just imagine you have to just think have you ever seen a motor around yourself you know a motor is something like this you know it is this bulky cylindrical structure so rotor is and if you see this is suppose this is your cylindrical structure and in between there is a shaft kind of a structure a steel shaft and that rotates so if you have seen motor somewhere you will find this kind of a structure that a cylindrical structure bulky structure is there and in between you have a shaft and that shaft rotates so that shaft is known as the rotor okay so what is a rotor now first of all just imagine visualize what is an electric motor how it looks it is just like a big bulky cylindrical structure okay and in between that structure you have a shaft like this okay so this is how your electric motor appears okay if you look from outside it's a big bulky structure hmm now rotor so rotor is what it is the moving part it is the moving part which turns the shaft which turns the shaft which turns the shaft to deliver power okay so because of you know because of this magnetic field electric current interaction the motor will make the shaft to rotate and when the shaft rotates it transmits the power okay and then rotor they usually have conductors okay they usually have conductors which so remember motor uh, rotors they usually have conductors which interacts with the you know these conductors they interact with the which interacts with the magnetic field to generate forces because of which the shaft rotates 
okay so now i hope this is clear to you so rotor means what it is basically constituted by conductors it basically consists of the conductor you know conductors and this conductor will interact with the magnetic force as if you could remember because ultimately when a conductor interacts with the magnetic field so this was the current carrying conductor if this conductor interacts with the magnetic field then only it will rotate i hope you remember my last lecture so rotors means basically they are constituted or they are cons they consist of conductors which interacts with the magnetic field and generates the force and because of that force the shaft rotates okay so i hope this is clear to you that what is a, a rotor now the second component is bearings bearings i hope you would have heard this word somewhere in your life you know ball bearing bearing those especially those who use bikes and all so they obviously they would have come across this word called bearing now bearing is basically a support system basically it is a support system now i'll explain it don't worry why i am writing things because you can pause the video and you can read and you can understand so bearings basically they are a kind of support system okay now support system means they support the rotor they support the rotor okay and bearing is supported by bearing is supported by motor housing housing so basically if i ask you what is bearing or in fact what is the function of bearing in electric motor so basically they act as a support system okay support system for what or support system for uh, which component for rotor okay now how a bearing works i'll give you a very brief example see suppose have you ever seen a wheel aapne kabhi dekha car ya scooter ke pahiye dekhe hain wheel so in wheel you have this axle and hub you know axle and hub these two things are there okay and this now in between if you see then you have this kind of a structure so this is your one structure structure number 1 and this is your second structure and between these two structure you have this circular balls okay and these balls are called ball bearings these are called ball bearings now you just imagine what is its function just tell me what could be its function see what happens because if suppose if the car is moving then obviously this will move okay and if this bearing is not there then they both will rub each other and they will cause rubbing friction they will cause rubbing friction okay now this rubbing friction the value of this rubbing friction is very high and that can damage this part you know this part can very easily be damaged that's why in between we put we put bearings and they will form or they cause rolling friction they these bearings cause rolling friction and the magnitude of rolling friction is always less than the rubbing friction so it means this bearing this ball bearing helps in prevention of excess friction you know so that easily that this these things can rotate and this rotatory motion can be transferred to this component easily and if this bearing is not there they will rub upon each other and they will rub upon each other and it will cause excess friction it will cause heat and it can cause erosion of this part okay so that's the importance of this bearing i hope now this is clear to you now the third component is stator stator now i told you it is somewhat like this the motor is somewhat like this in between you have the shaft is there so that outer housing system the static part you know because whenever you switch on the motor that shaft rotates that shaft rotates but this housing system that is you know that is what we call as stator and stator means it is derived from the word static so this is called stator because this is static this does not move whether your motor is in on position or whether your motor is in off position this housing this part stator will never rotate okay so this is what we call as stator now stator is nothing but the stationary part of the rotor they are nothing but the stationary part of the rotor now it consists of it consists of permanent magnets permanent magnets okay and the function its function is so what is the basically the function of stator to generate to generate 
magnetic field. So now if someone asks you rotate means here rotation is taking place. Okay, here the magnetic field is generating and when the conductor which is here in the rotor and this magnetic field they interact then this rotation motion happens. Okay, again I am telling you the rotor has conductors with them. The rotors has conductors within them and when this conductor interacts with the magnetic field which is produced in the stator then this rotation motor motion happens. So basically in a nutshell the rotation motion is because of the interaction between the rotor and the stator. Okay, I hope now it's clear to you. Now this is this that was the third component. The fourth component is the air gap. Air gap. So it is the gap or distance between stator and rotor. You know there always has to be some gap otherwise if they will rub each other and they will again cause the friction. So there has to be a some gap and mind it the gap should be optimum. Now if the gap is very large then obviously that air will act as a inhibiting medium. It will deteriorate the performance of your motor. So you cannot have a very large gap. But if the gap is very small then what will happen? Then there will be some mechanical losses will be there. You know some mechanical problems will be there. Some losses will be there. And then uh, uh, what we call as uh, I forgot noise. Yeah noise. So if the gap is very less. Suppose if the gap is very less then you can have some mechanical problems okay because they can touch over each other they can strike over each other then you will have some losses and then there will be some noise problem also so these three problems can occur if your air gap is very small so there has to be an optimum gap between the rotor that is moving and the stator okay so i hope this is clear to you okay now the fifth component is the windings now this is a very important component now what is winding I hope you would have heard about it now windings are they are wires that are laid into coils okay uh, first let me write it then I'll explain to you uh, they are usually means windings are usually they are usually you can say that they are wrapped they are usually wrapped around a soft iron magnet core okay so windings means see basically forget about this topic what do you mean by winding winding means some wire is there and you are constantly rotating it wrapping it so that is what we call as winding so in order to have a permanent magnet effect what you take you take a soft iron magnet okay you are taking this as soft iron magnet and then you just wind it up okay with the wire and when you pass current through the wire then this soft iron magnet core that will work as a permanent magnet so winding why it is important winding is important to have the permanent magnet effect if winding is not there you cannot generate permanent you cannot have that permanent magnet effect in the motor so again i am telling you what is winding you just take a soft iron magnet core a magnet core is there a magnet is there iron magnet you wrap wires over it and then you pass current into it so this iron core will start working as a magnet okay so if the winding is not there you will never get this permanent magnet effect in your motor so that is the importance of windings okay now the sixth part is the commutator i hope you all are familiar with this one because this we have already discussed in the last class in the last class what we have discussed is that suppose this is how your uh, this uh, what we call as current carrying conductor is rotating so in order for the motor to operate you need to change the direction of current at every half rotation you know you need to change the direction of current so commutator means it changes it helps in it helps in changing the direction of current okay uh, if you have like if you are not able to understand it properly please refer to the last lecture so commutator is basically what they will be of split rings this is how your commutator look, looks okay so this is a this is what we call as split rings and they are metallic metallic in nature okay and this is what we call as 
कार्बन ब्रश कार्बन ब्रश एंड ऑब्वियसली द बैटरी कनेक्शन इज अटैच टू इट एंड दिस स्प्लिट रिंग्स सी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर इज जस्ट स्लाइट कॉन्टेक्ट बिटवीन दीज टू इफ यू से दैट दीज टू आर अटैच टू इच अदर दे आर एम्बेडेड और दे आर वेल्डेड नो दैट्स नॉट द केस कार्बन ब्रश एंड कम्यूटेटर दे जस्ट टच इच अदर सॉरी स्प्लिट रिंग्स दे जस्ट टच इच अदर सो वेन एवर द इफ यूर कंडक्टर इज रोटेटिंग दिस विल ऑल्सो रोटेट बट दिस विल नॉट रोटेट दिस विल बी नॉट रोटेटिंग बट दिस विल बी रोटेटिंग ओके सो दिस विल गो एंड दिस विल ज्वाइन हियर एंड दिस विल कम एंड दिस विल ज्वाइन हियर सो इन दिस वे दिस वन विल बिकम टू एंड टू विल बिकम वन सो सिमिलरली अर्लियर इन दिस कंडक्टर इन दिस स्प्लिट रिंग इफ द डायरेक्शन ऑफ करेंट वॉज लाइक दिस इफ इट कम्स एंड ज्वाइन टू दिस ब्रश द करेंट और डायरेक्शन विल बी लाइक दिस आई होप इट्स क्लियर टू यू अगेन आई एम जस्ट इफ यू आर इन कंफ्यूजन आई एल एक्सप्लेन टू यू वंस अगेन सपोज यू आर हैविंग दिस स्प्लिट रिंग ओके एंड दिस इज योर कार्बन ब्रश नाउ बैटरी कनेक्शन इज देयर सो सपोज द बैटरी इज कनेक्टिंग लाइक दिस ओके सो इट मीन्स द करेंट इज फ्लोइंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन सो इन स्प्लिट रिंग वन इन रिंग वन द करेंट इज इन दिस डायरेक्शन नाउ वेन द वाइंडिंग रोटेट्स दिस कम्स हियर एंड दिस ज्वाइंस हियर and the moment it joins here in this the direction current was like this if the it joins here the direction of current changes similarly in two position in split ring 2 the current position was suppose this one once it joins here the current direction will be this one so you are able to change the direction of the current based on your split ring if the split ring is here the current direction is this much uh, is this one now once it joins here the current direction will be this one because these two uh, carbon brushes are static which is providing current but these two split rings are movable okay so now i hope this is clear to you okay so now these are the six components of electric motor okay now the next and the last topic for the day is losses now the efficiency of motor you know efficiency of motor is de determined by your intrinsic losses intrinsic losses that happens okay and in intrinsic losses it could be a fixed loss or it could be a variable loss now variable loss means as your motor is functioning the loss is happening fixed loss means these this is these are the losses that will inevitably happen you know whenever the motor works this losses will be definitely be happening but variable losses means if you change the parameter of the motor if you change the output of the motor then your losses will also vary that's why it is called variable losses and that's why it is called fixed losses okay in fixed losses the number the one loss is magnetic core loss the second loss is friction loss and the third loss is windage loss windage loss now Magnet, see the loss due to magnetic core will inevitably happen loss due to friction whenever the motor is in operation this will inevitably happen windage loss means you are having some windings so whatever winding whatever current you are uh, flowing into the winding everything will not be transferred in between some losses will happen so that's why we call it as windage loss and magnetic core loss is of two types first one is eddy current loss see again that's why i'm telling you to please go and read the class 12th basics i hope you all know what is eddy current if you don't know please read the basics so one is your eddy current loss and the second one is hysteresis loss okay so these two words i damn sure you would have read this in not only in your school but also in your btech first year that these are eddy current losses hysteresis losses so all these mind it in exam if these question comes don't put an excuse that sir you have not taught in the class please i don't want that excuse if you want me to teach ad current hysteresis then again let's have a you know let's have 60 70 or 80 classes because then i have to teach from very basic what is electric current what is flow of electron then what are ad current losses no when you are in btech degree you are expected that you are thorough with your class 10th 11th and 12th basics and for that you need to be thorough with these losses so please don't put any excuse now also i'm telling you to please go and read what are the eddy current losses and hysteresis losses okay as far as variable losses are concerned then there is resistance losses resistance losses or resistance loss and this loss happens in the stator 
and motor this loss happens in the stator and motor now i explain you why i i'm sure you would have heard about this term i square r this is called as heating loss i will explain you what is this now see whenever this conductor is there okay now current is trying to flow then there is a term called resistance now this resistance will try to put hurdles on the flow of this current this resistance is will try to put hurdles on this current and because of that resistance the heat will be generated heat will be generated which will be equal, equal, proportional to i square r for example aapne dekha hoga kisi wire mein agar bahut der tak current pass karo if, and if you touch that wire you will find that the temperature has increased you know it has become hot so why it happens it happens because of this much because of this reason that whenever a conductor is carrying current then the resistance of the conductor is trying to put hurdles it will try try to obstruct the current and that obstruction comes out in the form of heat and that is given by the formula i square r it means the heat generated is proportional to your i square r component okay so now i hope in today's class this is clear to you that uh, what are different components of motor what are different losses that happens while your motor is operational now i am giving you one homework that you have to do when you are at your home you have to also read the working of the working of different types of motor see i have taught you in general how a motor works okay but now you should also know how different types of motor works and you have to read three types number one is your induction motor induction motor number two synchronous synchronous motors and number 3 dc motor dc motors so this we have already studied now you have to study these two things and you know once you see it's like once you know the basic of electric motor that how it works then you have to just look at minute changes that will happen in induction case or in case of synchronous motor your concept should be clear that's what i always say see it's like i'll give you a very brief example if you know a to z alphabet and then if you are if i ask you to write the name called ram you can write it okay r a m you might find it little bit difficult but somehow you will learn and write it but if someone imagine a man or a woman who does not know this alphabet she doesn't know or he doesn't know what is a b c then can like would she or he be able to write this word ram no even such an easy word she or he won't be able to write it because she does not know the basics so as a faculty my job is to tell you the basics after that whatever building you have to build that you have to build by yourself you know there is a saying as a faculty my job is to build the foundation ab us foundation ke upar aap taj mahal banayenge ya koi jhopad patti banayenge wo aapki mehnat par depend karta hai okay so let it be for today's class thank you and have a great day ahead